his national security analyst and a former CIA and Defense Department chief of staff, Jeremy Bash. Jeremy, when I read this story, I saw, you know, I said, wait a minute, I think that's the same dude to the internet. And then you keep reading down. Um, first of all, this issue of Russian mercenaries, uh, how operative are they around the world? Well, first, I see your homeland, and I raise you 1964 James Bond from Russia with love. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so Russia uses mercenaries. They use private militaries because they engage in what's called hybrid warfare. They don't want to take on the United States in a force-on-force -force battle, like the old fold the gap tank battle during the Cold War. They want to use these little green men. They want to use private militaries. They want to use cyber attacks. They want to use agents of influence. A lot of the things that Bob Mueller laid out in last Friday's indictment of 13 individuals and several organizations are part and parcel of the effort, the covert action Russian effort. In Russia, they call it active measures. Now, this seemed, the, the, the way the Post reported this is that the motivation is uh, Assad wants the U.S. out of Syria. And this was, and, the, and Putin has said the United States is there illegally. They're there legally. Uh, he's made that before. So this was attempt, an attempt to send, a, I guess, a message to the United States uh, it sounds like our troops sent a message to the Russians. That's right. Look, Chuck, make no mistake. The Kremlin authorized an attack of Russian forces against a U.S. military position. And but for the skill and professionalism of special operations forces who repelled the attack and actually killed a large number of these Russian troops, President Trump would be standing on the tarmac at Dover Air Force Base welcoming home flag-draped transfer cases of American fallen heroes. It's that serious. So, I... Is there any way that this is connected to Mueller's indictment? Does Pergoza know he's under fire and he wants to send it? Or, or is that just too off the rails? No, I think, look, the big picture is, is that in no place around the world is Russia our friend. In no place around the world, certainly not in Syria, certainly not in Ukraine, certainly not uh, in Europe, has Putin been beneficial to U.S. interests. And for the president to consistently be obsequious to Putin, from to defer to Putin, from to say, I take Putin at his word, is really a huge blind spot that the president of the United States has. This was a remarkable scoop by the Post. Um, what was more remarkable is that the, how many government officials essentially went ahead and confirmed their scoop. They, you know, they gave them an, they gave them enough confirmation. They obviously did some great reporting here, and they gave them enough confirmation so that they feel comfortable reporting it. Um, were you surprised at how much detail the Post had? I sure was. Uh, again, if all of this reporting is true, it's an extraordinary revelation. It also shows that senior officials around the president don't really know how to handle their boss. If they tell him, hey, Mr. President, Vladimir Putin attacked our forces, yeah. they're not sure if they're going to have a job on Monday. Uh, that's the part of this. It's sort of this happened. This happened approximately, it looks like, about three or four weeks February ago. February 7th. Um, and we're sitting here and we're having to learn about it basically through leaks and sources of Russia attacked America. Is that is that a is that a uh, hyperbole or not? It's not. They massed forces. They crossed the river. Now, our forces were able to see them and fought back. But again, this is about as serious as it gets, Chuck. It shows again that the president's deference to Russia makes no sense. And this is where I think it is connected to the Mueller probe, which is we start from a proposition that we have a foreign policy in Russia that makes no sense. Why is President Trump so obsessed with giving Russia the benefit of the doubt? All right. What is happening in Syria right now? I ask this because it seems as if at times there are five different countries. Sometimes so now we're supposedly everybody had an interest in getting rid of ISIS. That was supposed for the Russians, the United States, the Turks, Assad, the Iranians. There seemed to be. And yet now with ISIS sort of in retreat, nobody wants to leave. Nobody wants to hand it to Assad and everybody is starting to either I thought by accident, but now they're pointing the guns at each other. Yeah, I think we've done one very good thing, which is we intensified our anti-ISIS campaign, mm -hmm. put more firepower on Raqqa, and have really uh, denied made real them, progress. made progress and denied them the physical caliphate right. that they sought. But we made a huge mistake, which is in the process, we pulled back our support from moderate Syrian forces mm -hmm. who could actually put pressure on Assad. We basically left Syria to the Russian, Iranian, Syrian axis. And now you see skirmishes even between Israel and Iran, right. and that threatens our ally Israel and threatens our interests in the region. And and we're still having issues with the Turks over the Kurds. That's right. And, and we, we have been supporting the Kurds, but we haven't been able to exactly align our strategy with our NATO ally, Turkey. How, are, how should, what is a realistic policy response then to the Russians here? 
It's very complicated, but the first and foremost thing we have to do is get them to agree to a ceasefire. The U.N. Security Council is considering a ceasefire uh, resolution. Russia has been opposing it. We now hear some reports that the resolution may come up as early as this weekend. Russia has to get on board because, as you've seen, Chuck, from the reports, 500 innocent civilians, including mm -hmm. potentially 100 children, have been killed in the latest right. bombardment but of Russia civilian can populations. Russia can agree to a ceasefire and let their mercenaries do their, uh, their dirty work. They can, and the international community has to hold Russia accountable. All right, Jeremy Bash. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, NBC News analyst. What a what a crazy story, but very important. Thanks, Frank.